Allahumma
السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. وعليكم السلام. الله أكبر الله أكبر. الله أكبر الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله. Indeed, all praise is due to Allah. We seek His guidance and His forgiveness, and we seek refuge with Him from the evil of ourselves and the evil of our actions. Whoever Allah guides, none can misguide, and whoever Allah misguides, none can guide. And I bear witness that there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah alone with no partners, and that Muhammad is a slave and messenger. We ask Allah the Almighty and beseech him to send his peace and blessings upon his last and final messenger, and upon his family and his companions, those who follow in their footsteps until the end of time. To proceed, my dearly respected brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent his prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as a warner and as a bringer of glad tidings. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent his prophets and messengers in general as those who were sent to give good nasiha, advice and information to their nations and their peoples and their tribes, wanting what is best for them and wanting their guidance. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not send a prophet to his people except that he took upon him the covenant that they would clarify to the people that which is good for them and clarify to the people that which will harm them and lead them to destruction and astray so that they may warn them of that evil and destruction and may advise them for that which will give them success in this world and in the next. And the Prophet wasallam was from those who was always giving us advice and giving us the wasiyya, and giving us the information that we need to be successful in both worlds. And sometimes the Prophet Sallallahu was the one who started with the advice. And he started giving the people the advice. And so sometimes a Sahabi, a companion would come to him 
and he would ask for advice and he'd give it to him. And sometimes the Prophet ﷺ would receive the same question from different companions. And the advice would be different from the Prophet ﷺ based on the state of the person asking him. And he would ask the same question. But at times he would say, Oh Rasulullah, give me this advice. What is the best of this? What is the most beloved deeds to Allah? What is this? What is that? And the answer may be the same. And the answer may be different based on the person asking him. So at times the Prophet ﷺ would be one to start with the advice or he would be asked. And so when the Prophet ﷺ gave the advice, he gave the best of advices and the most beneficial of advices. And from the great advices that the Prophet ﷺ gave us and gave this ummah is an advice to stick to a certain act of worship. An act of worship we've been ordered to do in all states at all times, in all places. An act of worship we've been ordered to do after we finish the salah. An act of worship we've been ordered to do after the siyam, after leaving from Arafat, after finishing the hajj, when entering the masjid, when leaving the masjid, when entering the restroom, when leaving the restroom, before we fall asleep, when we wake up in the morning. In all of our states, in all of our times and places, this is an advice from the Prophet ﷺ to stick to a certain type of worship. This advice of sticking to this act of worship that we stick to even when we're born, we are given this act of worship. And on our deathbed, we follow this act of worship. It is none other than the great act of worship of the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This act of worship, dear brothers and sisters, is so great that the one who remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the one who does not remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is like the living and the dead. As has come in the two sahihs that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, مَثَلُ الَّذِي يَذْكُرُ رَبَّهُ وَالَّذِي لَا يَذْكُرُ رَبَّهُ كَمَثَلِ الْحَيِّ وَالْمَيِّدِ The similitude of the one who remembers his Lord and the one who does not remember his Lord is like the alive and the dead, the living and the dead. That the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that which gives life to you. And without it you are dead. You are spiritually dead. The one who is heedless of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and does not remember him. But all he thinks about is the creation and the people and not Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Does not look at the repercussions of his actions. Doesn't look at the consequences of his actions. Does not think this action will be pleasing to Allah or not. But rather it will be pleasing to the people or not. Will it get me money or not? Will it give me what I want in dunya or not? Will people say about me this or that or not? But not about what will Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take me to account for, for this action or not. The one who does not remember his Lord is like the one who is dead. And this advice, dear brothers and sisters, is one that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam advised the people with. And he acted upon his own advice. He advised the people with, with this great advice of remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like we said at times, he would start with the advice. Like in the hadith narrated by Tirmidhi ibn Majah and others, and authenticated by Shaykh al-Bani, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, أَلَا أُنَبِّئُكُمْ بِخَيْرِ أَعْمَالِكُمْ وَأَسْكَاهَا عِنْدَ مَلِيكِكُمْ وَأَرْفَائِهَا فِي دَرَجَاتِكُمْ وَخَيْرٌ لَكُمْ مِنْ إِنْفَاقِ الذَّهَبِ وَالْوَرِقِ أي الفضة وَخَيْرٌ لَكُمْ مِنْ إِنْفَاقِ الذَّهَبِ وَالْوَرِقِ وَخَيْرٌ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنْ تَلْقَوْا عَدُوَّكُمْ فَتَضْرِبُوا أَعْنَاقَهُمْ وَيَضْرِبُوا أَعْنَاقَكُمْ قَالُوا بَلَى قَالَ ذِكْرُ اللَّهِ The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he gave us this great advice. He said, again, starting with the advice, like we said at times, he would start with the advice. At times he would answer the question. He'd be asked first, then give the advice. The Prophet ﷺ is starting with the advice. He's saying, should I not inform you of that which is from the best of your deeds, the most virtuous of your deeds, the highest in ranks of your deeds, the best of your deeds, better from even giving gold and silver in charity, better than even if you were to get your neck chopped or you chop off the neck of your enemy, even in the battlefield, better than you getting your neck chopped in the battlefield with your enemy. He said, yes, of course. What's better than all this? What's better than all of this? The Prophet he said, the remembrance of Allah. The remembrance of Allah, this great advice to your brothers and sisters, is better than all of these things. But it's a simple advice too. It's something that we can all do. Maybe not all of us can give in charity gold and silver. Maybe not all of us can do all of these things. But every one of you can do the simple act of worship. That is better than all of these things. And that's why, again, the Prophet repeating this advice 
when he's asked about it, when a man came to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and he asked him, and the Rajul and Sa'ala Nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, a man came to the Prophet and asked him, Ya Rasulullah, inna shara'i al-Islami qad kathurat alayhi, fa'akhbirni bi shay'in atashabbathu bihi, qala la yazalu lisanuka rabban min dhikrillah. A man came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he said, Oh Messenger of Allah, the legislations of Islam have become many. There are a lot of things to do. Of course, the shurrah, the commentators, they mentioned these are the nawafil, the supererogatory acts. The man is not asking to get away from any of the furud, the things that are obligatory. But there are so many things to do. And the legislations are so many. Give me something. Advise me with something that I can stick to. Just one thing I can do. All the things in Islam are many for me to do. There's so much to do. And I just want one simple thing to do. Give me as an advice. One simple thing to do. He's not trying to get away from salah and siyam and the obligatory matters. This person just wants one simple thing that can replace all these other great supererogatory acts. He just wants one thing to do and focus on. That will be his success in the dunya and the akhirah. So the Prophet sallallahu he gives him the advice and he says, always have your tongue be wet with the remembrance of Allah. Always have your tongue busy with the remembrance of Allah. This is a simple thing, a simple thing that we can do, every single one of us, remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Very easy to do. Doesn't take effort and energy and, and strong body and youth, no. The young and the old, the male and the female, anyone can remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala very easily. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa was from those who acted on his own advice. As it's been reported that the Prophet they would count that in one majlis, in one gathering, he would seek istighfar, he would seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 70 times. And another narration 100 times. So the Prophet was the first to act upon his advice. Even though he is the one whose sins are forgiven. Yet he is always remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Always heedful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And from the greatest of dhikr and the simplest of dhikr that I want us to leave here today. That we can implement your brothers and sisters. I'm not saying you have to memorize the long afkar and some of the things that may be difficult for those who may not speak Arabic. But the some of the simple dhikr that has great reward that we can seek to day and night, that we all already know, we all already know we don't have to learn it, are four words. <coughs> four words. Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar. Four words each and every one of us, the young and the old, already knows. But if we stick to them, we'll find great reward with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this, this is something that has great virtue with very few letters we have to pronounce. If we learn about the virtues, we'll be encouraged to stick to it in the day and the night. And from the great virtues is that this is from the most beloved words to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As has come in Sahih Muslim from the hadith of Samura, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, أَحَبُّ الْكَلَامِ إِلَى اللَّهِ أَرْبَعَ لَا يَضُرُّكَ بِأَيِّهِنَّ بَدَأْتِ Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar. That the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, the most beloved words to Allah are four. It doesn't harm me which one of them you start with. Just say the four, don't worry about the order. Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar. What are some of the great virtues of just these four words, dear brothers and sisters? It has come the hadith of Nu'man ibn Bashir, as is narrated by Imam Ahmad ibn Maj and Al-Hakim and others, and authenticated by Shaykh al-Bani, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, At-tasbihatu, wa tahmidatu wa tahlilatu wa fi riwayatin, inna mimma tadkuruna min jalalillah, at-tasbihu wa tahmidu wa takbir, at-tasbihatu wa tahmidatu wa tahlilatu, yata'atafna hawla al-arshi, lahunna dawiyun kadawiyin nahli, yudakkinna bi sahibihin, أَلَا يُحِبُّ أَحَدُكُمْ أَلَّا يَزَالَ لَهُ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِ مَا يُذَكِّرُ بِهِ The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, saying, Subhanallah, and Alhamdulillah, and La ilaha illallah. And in different narrations of the hadith, they mention the four, but not all together. Some of the narrations of the hadith mention the tasbih and the tahmeed and the tahleel. Another version mentions the tasbih and the tahmeed and the takbir. Another version mentions the tasbih and the tahleel and the takbir. The point is, when we gather all the chains of the hadith, this is the job of the muhaddith. We gather all the chains of the hadith, we find that there are four total words the Prophet ﷺ is praising here and giving this virtue. Saying, Subhanallah and Alhamdulillah, and La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, 
the Prophet said these words, they ascend to the throne. The one who says, says these words, they ascend to the throne. And they move around the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they have a sound like the sound of bees. Mentioning the one who said them. And then the Prophet ﷺ asked a question that every believer knows the answer to. Would not each one of you like something to mention him with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? When we say these words, dear brothers and sisters, they ascend to Allah. And the reward of these words, this dhikr, these four words, they manifest in a physical manner in a way that Allah knows best. And they move around the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they mention you before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this has come in many different texts of the Sharia ah, that the good word ascends to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the one whom mentions Allah. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He tells us, فَذْكُرُونِ أَذْكُرْكُمْ Remember me, remember me and mention me, I will mention him. <coughs> this is from this. When we mention Allah and remember Allah, Allah will manifest the reward of these words in His presence, mentioning you. This is from your grandeur and elevation of status that Allah has given you for remembering Him. Remember me, I will remember you. That Allah will have before Him that which will remember you in the higher gathering. And has come in the hadith Qudsi as well. مَنْ ذَكَرَنِي فِي نَفْسِهِ ذَكَرْتُهُ فِي نَفْسِهِ وَمَنْ ذَكَرَنِي فِي مَلَئٍ ذَكَرْتُهُ فِي مَلَئٍ خَيْرٍ مِنْ مَلَئِهِ Whoever remembers, remembers me and mentions me in his self, I will mention him in myself. And whoever mentions me in a gathering, I will mention him in a gathering better than his gathering. This is a gathering better than this gathering, that you mention these words. What better gathering than the gathering around Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, at the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the angels, that these words are manifested before Allah in the higher gathering, praising you and mentioning you. And these words ascending to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us happens with the good word. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, إِلَيْهِ يَصْعَدُ كَلِمُ الطَّيِّبِ To him ascends the good word. This is from the sunnah explaining the Qur'an, that these words will ascend to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and manifest in this way that mentions you like we mentioned, and praises you in the higher gathering. And so, from the benefits of these four words is that they will praise you before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And also, from the benefits of these words, dear brothers and sisters, is that they are means for you to plant trees for you in Jannah. As is come in the hadith of At-Tirmidhi, and declared to be Hassan by Shaykh al-Izbani, and it's from the hadith of Ibn Mas'ud, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لَقِيتُ إِبْرَاهِيمَ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامِ لَيْلَةَ أُسْرِيَ بِي I met Ibrahim alayhi salam on the night I was ascended, on the night of ascension. فَقَالَ يَا مُحَمَّدُ أَقْرِئْ أُمَّتَكَ مِنِّي السَّلَامِ Oh Muhammad, give your ummah the salam from me. Give your ummah the salam from me. وَأَخْبِرْهُمْ أَنَّ الْجَنَّةَ عَذْبَةُ الْمَاءِ طَيِّبَةُ التُّرْبَةِ وَأَنَّهَا قِيْعَانِ وَأَنَّ غِرَاسَهَا سُبْحَانَ اللَّهِ وَالْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ وَلَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ وَاللَّهُ أَكْبَرُ Oh Muhammad, give your ummah my salam and inform them. That Jannah is a place of pure water and good dirt and flat land that is, that is suitable for agriculture. And that the seeds of the land of Jannah are these words of dhikr. Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, and Allahu Akbar. With these simple words, you're planting for yourself, investing in your akhirah. Planting and investing and building your real estate in the akhirah. With these simple words that you can say anywhere. And the one who is truly successful is the one who has truly gathered great real estate in the akhirah. Not the one who has gathered great lands and buildings and real estate in the dunya. But the one who has gathered great land and trees and agriculture and real estate in the akhirah. And in the Jannah, the trees of Jannah are not like the trees of dunya. The trees of Jannah are different. We have a tree of Tuba. The Tuba tree is a tree that a writer can ride in its shade for a hundred years and still be in its shade. And the clothes of the people of Jannah come from this tree. The pockets open up from the tree and come from it, the clothes of the people of Jannah. The trees of Jannah are not the trees of the dunya. And the palaces of Jannah are not like the palaces of dunya. And the pleasures of Jannah are not like the pleasures of dunya. 
but the names are the same. But you'll eat something called an apple in Jannah. It's completely different than what we call an apple in the dunya. And so on and so forth. So the remembrance of Allah in so many hadith, not just with these four words, but simplifying with just these four words, we are mentioning to you. But there's so many pleasures and rewards of mentioning different types of adhkar of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This dhikr gives you this. This dhikr gives you this. The easiest of acts of worship that anyone can do. Lying down, sitting down, in the car, walking. Every act that you're doing in the dunya, for the most part, you can remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in. And you turn every day your mundane actions, your mundane actions during your life into actions of remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there are people in this world that are like this, that they never stop remembering Allah. We know them. There are some people we know them. They don't waste the time talking about others. They don't waste their time backbiting others and spreading rumors about others and speaking about idle things and wasting their time. But if they're going to speak, they're going to speak with the remembrance of Allah. And if they're not going to speak, if they're not going to say anything good, then no speaking. But they speak not to remember Allah and instead to use it in the haram, then subhanAllah, what a loss. What a loss of time. What a loss of potential reward. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those who remember Him. Speaking from those of the those remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while standing and while sitting and on their side, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive our sins and forgive our shortcomings to make us from those whom their tongues are always moist with remembrance of Allah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salamu ala sayyidina rasulillah. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wa la wa taba'a huda thumma amma ba'd. Dear brothers and sisters, one of the direct correlations between the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the lack thereof is the issue of sincerity. The one who has sincerity is the one who remembers Allah and His deed. So the one who is doing something and mentions the name of Allah before it, and mentions Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala throughout it, that deed, then this is a person who's going to, inshallah, be doing that deed for the sake of Allah. As for the one who does the deed, not to mention Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, doesn't mention Allah on it, doesn't remember Allah about it throughout the act of worship, or throughout this deed, then most likely this is someone who is not doing it for the sake of Allah, but he's doing it for other than Allah. And so the one who remembers Allah is the one who will be able to achieve the sincerity, inshallah. And the one who is heedless of Allah, then when he's doing an act of worship, Allah will come across his mind and he'll be doing it for other than Allah. And this is a very serious matter. This matter of hidden shirk, of showing off, of ostentation, of being heedless of Allah and not doing something for the sake of Allah. This is a detrimental matter to your brothers and sisters. As has come in the hadith, which is hadith Qudsi, from the hadith of Abu Hurairah, أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال قال الله عز وجل أنا أخن الشركاء عن الشرك فمن عمل لي عملا أشرك فيه غيري فأنا منه بريء فمن عمل لي عملا أشرك فيه غيري فأنا منه بريء وهو للذي أشرك الله سبحانه وتعالى says in the hadith Qudsi I am the most sufficient. I am so self-sufficient that I am in no need of having an associate. So whoever does an action for someone else's sake, and mine as well, he did it for both, then that action will be renounced by me. And it will be left for the one whom he associated with me for that action. You did an action to please the people, and also for Allah. But to please the people, or to please someone besides Allah, with Allah, then Allah says, I am sufficient. I don't need you to give me a partner. I am sufficient from having a partner in your action. Khalas, I don't need your action. If you're going to do it for someone else with me, I don't need your action and leave that deed for the one you did it for him with me. And as come in the hadith as well, <coughs> that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, إِنَّ أَخْوَفَ مَا أَخَافُ عَلَيْكُمْ الشِّرْكُ الْأَصْغَرُ قَالُوا وَمَا الشِّرْكُ الْأَصْغَرُ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ قال الرياء يقول الله عز وجل لهم يوم القيامة إذا جزي الناس بعمالهم اذهبوا إلى الذين كنتم تراءون في الدنيا 
فانظروا هل تجدون عندهم جزاء Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says also in the other hadith Qudsi that the Prophet ﷺ told us that which I most fear for you the Prophet ﷺ is telling us that which I most fear for you is the subtle shirk the hidden shirk so he was asked what is this subtle shirk what is the hidden shirk he said showing off the riyah ostentation showing off Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say on the day of judgment when the people are given their rewards Go to those whom you were showing off for. Those whom you were showing off for in the dunya, go to them and see if they will give you the reward. I am not going to give you a reward for that, which you did not do for my sake. The intention, the remembrance of Allah, being mindful of Allah in a deed, this can make the whole difference between whether your action is accepted or not. Whether that action is a reason for Jannah or Hellfire. The remembrance of Allah, why you are doing it? I remember Allah and this is for Allah. Or I for, I'm heedless of Allah and this is not for Allah. And that's why you find the Salaf, dear brothers and sisters, they work so hard on this issue of ikhlas. It's not easy. Shaitan will come to you left and right. Will try to ruin your intention. Left and right. He'll come to you through that door. You shut that door, he comes to you through that door. And that's why the Salaf, they tried to block all the doors. The Salaf, they would do everything they could to stop that part in the heart from being exposed from the praise of people and wanting to do it for anyone else. Like in Fudayl ibn Ayyad, one of the great Imams of the Salaf, <coughs> he used to say, we met people that used to show off with what they did. And people, they would do something and they would show off with it. And now we have people who show off with what they didn't even do. And we have people who show off with something they didn't even do. They're claiming they did things and they show off and they brag about those things they haven't even done them. In the past, when people showed off, at least they did what they're show, uh, claiming they're showing off for. Now people are showing off with what they didn't even do. <coughs> and the salaf, they would hide their good deeds from the people. To try to make it solely for the sake of Allah. Which one of us has something between him and Allah alone? Him and Allah alone, no one else knows about. So Ibrahim ibn Adham, one of the great imams of the salaf, when people would try to look for him, they're asking about him. Where is the great Imam Ibrahim Adham? He would join the crowd looking for himself. So he wouldn't say, I'm Ibrahim Adham, come here, come kiss my hand and shake my hand and please form a line to the left, women on the right, men on the left. No, he would hide in the crowd and look for himself with everyone else. Where is Ibrahim Adham? I'm looking for myself so no one knows who is Ibrahim Adham. And also from the Salaf, Ibn Mubarak, he said about Ibrahim Adham also, he said he used to hide his actions. And you eat with the common people and he'd be the last one to raise his hand from the food so that people thought he ate a lot. So people wouldn't know that he had zuhd and he didn't eat that much. He would eat with people, he would hide his actions and he'd eat with the people. And when he ate with the people, he'd be the last one to take his hand from the food. So people thought he ate a lot just like everyone else and they didn't know that he was someone who kept away from the pleasures of the dunya. And Muhammad ibn Aslam, one of the great imams of the salaf, he said, <coughs> He was a companion of Muhammad ibn Aslam. One of his companions said, I was a companion of Muhammad ibn Aslam for 20 years. Muhammad ibn Aslam, one of the great imams, one of his companions said, I, I was his companion. I was with him for 20 years. And I never saw him pray two units of sunnah prayer where people could see him except on Friday. Because the sunnah is to come early to the Jummah prayer and pray in the masjid there before the salah. But other than that, I never saw two units of salah from him in front of the people. He always hid his salah and his qiyam. And he used to say, Muhammad ibn Asham, he said, if I was able to hide my sunnah prayers in a place where even my two angels couldn't find them, out of fear showing off, I would. And Ayyub al-Sakhtiyani, one of the great imams of the salaf, he would pray the entire night. And when the morning came, he would raise his voice as if he was just yawning like he just woke up. Can you imagine this? You leave your bed, your wife is sleeping, she doesn't know, you go into the corner of another room and no one else knows except you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you're praying the qiyam and when it's right before Fajr Salah and she's about to wake up, you get back into bed and you start yawning when she wakes up because she thinks you were sleeping all night with her. This was the way of the salaf. They didn't look for praise, they didn't look for any recognition except from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Dawood ibn Abi Hind, one of the Imams of the Salaf also, and we'll end because the time is up. He used to fast for 40 years and his own family didn't know. And how did he do that? 
<clears throat> he would go out in the morning, his wife would make him the lunch for the day, he'd take the lunch with him, the lunch box, he'd go out, on the way he'd find a poor person, he'd give the charity the food, come back late at, during the day after work, it's time for Maghrib, he has dinner with his family, and they're none the wiser. Tawan, of course, you know, the wives are going to be upset that, you know, I've been making lunch for you for 40 years and you never ate it. But this is between him and Allah. He, even his own family didn't know he was fasting for 40 years. And the ulama and the mashayikh, they didn't play on their good name and their fame to get good deals like we do. We as a mashayikh, we want to get in front of the line, we want the food first, we want a good deal at the store. We, oh, he's the imam of the masjid, let me give you a good deal. Okay, oh, thank you brother, and we accept it and... Our world of, all of us were the first ones to afford, be guilty of this. But the salaf, they wouldn't do that. So from the salaf, that when a store owner would recognize them and want to give them a good deal on a garment or something, they would become upset. And they say, we buy with our wealth, not with our religion. And so the list could go on and on, and the stories could go on and on, dear brothers and sisters. But the point is, the remembrance of Allah is your cure for all your woes, your sadness, all your problems in this world and in the next. Remembering Allah makes you realize that nothing else matters. And the dhikr of Allah is akbar. Allah tells us the remembrance of Allah is greater than all things, and bigger than all this, and bigger than all your woes and your problems. And whoever remembers Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will remember him. And he'll bring about solutions for your problems, as we mentioned in many khutab before. And whoever remembers Allah, and makes their deeds solely for Allah, and not for the creation, and does something for Allah, or gives up something for Allah, then Allah will replace that which He gave up for His sake with something better than that. But with the condition that it's because you remembered Allah, and you did it solely for the sake of Allah, not for the creation, not for the praise of people, not for recognition. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those who remember Him. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make our deeds solely for His sake. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make our gathering here today solely for His sake, and our proof for us not against the day that we meet Him. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep us firm upon His religion in these lands, to keep our children firm upon His religion in these lands after us. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect our children, protect our women, our daughters, our mothers, our wives, protect them with their hijab, ya Rabbil Alameen, from all harm, from those who wish them harm. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect the Muslim community and allow us to call to the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to use us for that which pleases Him, and to not use us for that which displeases Him, and to take our souls upon that which pleases Him, and to not take our souls upon that which displeases Him. Barakallahu feekum. Hada wa sallahu wa sallam ala sayyidu Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Wa qum wa ila salatikum yarhamkumullah.
الصلاة فانتشروا في الأرض وابتغوا من فضل الله وابتغوا من فضل الله واذكروا الله كثيرا واذكروا الله كثيرا لعلكم تفلحون وإذا رأوا تجارة أو لهوا انفضوا إليها وتركوك قائما قل ما
Tonight, I mean, death is, we believe on that and how to prepare the, the body for the deceased. We invited Imam Kasmi tonight, he's just going to talk, I mean, give us the training how to prepare the body and what are the etiquettes for the janata and for the whistle of the body. I encourage everybody, youth, brothers, sisters, please come tonight after the shah and uh, get the opportunity to learn about that, inshallah. <laughs> Don't forget to support your master.
الله
سيدنا ومولانا محمد وآله وأصحابه وزرياته وأهل بيته أجمعين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله ولتنظر نفس ما قدمت لغد واتقوا الله إن الله خبير بما تعملون ولا تكونوا كالذين نسوا الله فأنساهم أنفسهم أولئك هم الفاسقون لا يستغي أصحاب النار وأصحاب الجنة أصحاب الجنة هم الفائزون وقال سبحانه وتعالى في مقام آخر منها خلقناكم وفيها نعيدكم ومنها نخرجكم طارة أخرى صدق الله العظيم <coughs> My dear respected brothers and sisters and youngers assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh This is the great mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He is the one who gave us opportunity to gather over here May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our gathering May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us love of deen great understanding of our religion and may Allah keep us on his way until death my dear brother and sisters I am not here just because I am somebody I am great scholar or great imam I just heard beautiful quran from our imam alhamdulillah surah al-kahf Beautifully he has recited that. I cannot read like that. Because my action is an Indian action. So, I am here just because of my seniority. You have more ilm, more knowledge than me. But I am here just because of my seniority. I cannot share my, uh, my knowledge, but I will share my experience. First, I would like to tell you that this is very hard job. How I got involved in this? Forty years ago, from Reno to San Jose, it was very hard, very, very hard to find some imam to arrange janaza, give ghusl, give kafan, and until the burial this is not from me it is from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala i don't have dearness in that time i was young i was 20 5.26 year old I remember 1984 in San Francisco Alhamdulillah I established with my friends there is a masjid in front of San, Fr San Francisco airport San Mateo Masjid Al-Haq on Poplar Avenue from Highway 101 So I was a imam over there for three years. So 1984, what happened? After Fajr Salat, I didn't have anything to do, although I used to do double job, because you have to do in San Francisco, otherwise you cannot survive. So after Fajr, I received a call. And he said, Imam Saab, someone passed away. I said, Inna lillahi wa inna ila rajiya. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept him, give him jannatul firdos, and may Allah give you patience. I said like this. And what else we can say? We have to say like this, right, as a Muslim? 
he accepted my condolence. Then he said, we are coming to you. I said, what for? We're going to take you to morgue, funeral home. I said, what for? Because you are the one who going to give him ghusl and kafan and etc. It is very hard to hold the receiver. In that time, there was no cell phone. We have a line line business. So I don't I didn't know what to say. Because if I say no, suddenly I start to think what gonna think about me, this brother? What he gonna think about me? What kind of person he is? <coughs> So called, he's an imam, he's leading community, and he's saying no. So then, where are we going to go in this world? For a minute or two, maybe, I didn't say anything, so he was saying, Hello, imam, you are there. So then I said, Yeah, I'm here. So we are coming. I said, Yeah. How long are you going to take? They said that within an hour we will be there. So no. Then I was jumping in my house. I don't know what to do. I know the Messiah. What is far, what is wajib, what is sunnah. I know fiqh. But I didn't have any practical experience about it. When I graduated, I left India, I went to Kiji Island for five years, I was a teacher and imam. So in Fiji Island, if I attend any janaza, people love to talk about my presence, oh Imam Khasmi was there in the janaza. So I didn't get any opportunity to serve practically. I used to go to attend the janaza and give talk and make dua and that's it. But now, it's totally different. In Bay Area, in that time, there was a three Islamic center. Now we have a, almost 50. In that time, only three Islamic center. Crescent in San Francisco downtown, and San Jose Masjid, and Santa Clara Masjid in Noor. That's it. Then later on, alhamdulillah, many masajid start to come in the picture. So, I didn't know what to do. My wife was surprised what I am doing. Then I said, okay, just make dua. Allah will give, you know, some life and Allah will provide some kind of help. So I start to think, 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 think. Then I call elderly guy. He's from Fiji Island. He was a Amirul Jamaat, a Jamaatul Dawa, Tablighi Jamaat we call. His name is Muhammad Aziz. He's still, Alhamdulillah, he's alive, but he's in very, uh, you know, critical condition. But Alhamdulillah. So in my understanding, maybe he did this thing before. So why don't I, I know, call him and get help? So he used to work for United Airways. So I called him. I said, Uncle, I am Imam Khasmi. He said, Yeah, yeah, Imam Sahib. Oh, in early morning, what happening? I asked, Did you give ghusl for my jet? Why you are asking? I said, No, I am asking. Yeah, I did. You did here or you did in Fiji? He said, yeah, I did in Fiji. I did over here a couple of times. I said, uncle, please come. Doesn't matter, you have to take a leave for me, for Dean, for Muslim brother, just come over here. Why someone passed away, I said, yeah. So 
So he came. Alhamdulillah, before the family gonna come, he came. Alhamdulillah, I was talking to him. I said, please guide me. I will be with you. I don't know what to do. Even I didn't know how to take the clothes off. Because I didn't have any experience before. On top of that, May Allah accept him, give him Jannatul Firdaus, the person who passed away. That was accidental death. And the autopsy was there. From here to here, then from here to there, <coughs> bloody cloth. So I was so surprised. I was holding myself. I was not doing anything. Uncle was doing. But carefully I was watching. If I gonna serve the religion of Islam and Muslim, in last moment, I have to be very careful. Otherwise I have to leave this country. So, Alhamdulillah, you know, the janaza was done. Then, I was reading a book. There was a Sheikh al Hadith in India. His name was Sheikh Zakaria. So his life, his biography I was reading. So in his biography, I found something which gives me strength. He was a Sheikh al Hadith of India. Well famous. Thousand and thousand students they graduated from his institution. And he was a Sharih of many uh, Hadith like Abu Dawood and etc. etc. So he said, he announced in the city if any person passed away, I have to know that. And I'm going to go and give him whistle if I am available. If some person passed away with bad disease and like this, then no one going to give him whistle but me. So then I start to think who I am. I mean, look at his status. Sheikh al Hadith. Our, my teacher was his student. Hafiz al Hadith, Sheikh al Hadith. So I said, he was doing that. First, I'm going to give him Ghusul. And in critical condition, nobody wants to get closer to body. He going to go and you give him Ghusul. Then he reported a uh, few ahadith from different, different books. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said that if any person who give ghusl to someone, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive all his past sin. That hadith and his statement give me energy. I said, yes. Inshallah, I will take this matter seriously. It is very easy to go in front of the people and give lecture for one hour. People will be happy. Alhamdulillah. If people going to accept and bring, you know, my words in their practice, Alhamdulillah. But actually, this is the one I have to think about. It. So, Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give me continuously opportunity from that day until now. I used to travel hundreds of miles because people call in that area there is no masjid, no imam. And then my wife also get involved in this. Because of course I cannot give ghusl to a sister. Sister gonna give was sold to sisters and there was no sister and I told my
my wife, you gonna do that? He said, how can I do that? He was like 21 years old in that time, 22 years old. And top of that, she's from, alhamdulillah, very landlord family. Many servants for her over there in India. And now I am taking her to do this job. I don't know about other countries in India. There was a shop called Tajheez and Takfeen in Urdu and Farsi. And in that shop, there is a lot of coffins and other materials and other things which we use in the time of Ghusl, like, you know, Kapoor and all this kind of thing. And in front of that shop, one lady was sitting there and reading paper, and one brother is sitting over there and reading paper. If any news comes, and the owner of the shop gonna tell, sister, if sister passed away, okay, get ready, people are coming to take you. Or brother passed away, so the owner gonna say, hey, get ready, somebody is coming for you. So people used to take them in their houses and get their job, and then they used to pay them, and that's it. Even real brother, real sisters, they don't help that much. So I didn't think in my own life, and my wife, of course, she didn't think that way. We believe in this kind of sin one day. So Alhamdulillah, so I told her the way I got it from Hadith and from our teacher, I told her, you know, you have to get this. And there is another Hadith. If any person who attend the Janazah, he will get one Qairah. And if any person who waited until the grave will be covered, he will get two Qairah. Sahaba asked, what is the meaning of Qairah? Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says the reward which is equivalent to mountain. And consider mountain of Ahad. Seven and a half kilometer. That big mountain. And you are getting that much reward. So what else you need? Huh? Your past sin will go away. And you are getting this much reward. So what you will get? What else you want? So by this way, I enter in this fear. So in that time it was very hard because we didn't have a Muslim cemetery. We used to take the body in non-Muslim cemetery. First of all, we cannot bury within 24 hours because we don't have a people to work that fast. And one hand, our religion demands that. You have to do it as soon as possible. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, you have to be hurry for three things. When the prayer time will come, just offer. When the boy or girl will reach on proper age, solemnize marriage ceremony. <coughs> when the janaza, you know, get ready, so just perform it as soon as possible. So, <coughs> <coughs> Can you bring a water, brother? One of them. Yeah, please. <coughs> so, Bhamullah. So, Brian. <coughs> ah. <coughs> so, in that time, we used to take the body in non-Muslim cemetery. First thing I experienced, there was no warm water over there. I have to ask bucket. And sometimes they don't want to help me either. Alone myself, I have to do that. I just want to encourage you. I'm not telling what I have done, astaghfirullah. Otherwise, I'm going to lose my ajr. Astaghfirullah, I don't want that. I am just telling you that I want to encourage you. You know, one time what happened? 
the most costliest cemetery in Sacramento, it is a Mount Vernon. Okay? And the funeral home looked like I know White House. Okay? They took me inside. Hundreds of bodies was there. And he was checking, all right, with the tag. Not this, not this, not this, not this. Finally, he saw, okay, this is yours. I said, okay, this is mine, okay. All right, so you will be with me. Well, I, no, 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 I have to do some job in my office. I am going. Leaving Imam Qasmi among 100 bodies. So I said, you are going. And uh, one thing I want to tell you that, okay, all yours, I am going to lock from outside. Yes, this is the policy. We cannot live open this area. Ya Allah. What I do not do? I said, Hasbi Allah wa ni'mal wakil. Ni'mal mawla wa ni'mal nasir. Okay, Allah is enough for me. And top of that, I have seen the body. They are wrapped in plastic. Or very thin garment see through easily you can recognize this is a man and this is a woman I said astaghfirullah when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us opportunity to establish a Muslim cemetery so that is the first thing Muslim brother with non-Muslim sister very close see through or Muslim sister among different I mean all this kind of thing I have seen I was making dua Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the most important thing in the time of burial you will not get proper direction of Qibla they have a setup and they just want to follow that now it is up to you how you gonna do so we had a no choice so all this kind of thing happened but finally, Alhamdulillah, myself, brother Najmi Minhaj and Qasimuddin, you know this name and you know the personality in the beginning. So we had to go for two, three projects. When Najmi came as, as a president of Muslim Mosque Association, we have a sitting in his home first. We have to start school and we have to start many other things. What is your priority? I said school and cemetery. So Al Arham School actually started from downtown. I think three or four years uh, we have uh, we use our facility over there. After that, you know, department start to demand. You have to have a soccer field. You have to have a basketball field. You have to have a proper lab and all this kind of thing. Then Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, in same time, this place was best, right? The best, all right? Like a target, all right? Alhamdulillah, Brother Sadiq is here. All this young blood, Alhamdulillah, they worked very hard, and Alhamdulillah, they bought this one. So we shift Allah from school from there to here. And... Uh, um, <coughs> Shazi, brother Shazi was with us in that time. Alhamdulillah. May Allah give him long life. May Allah give him health. I love to see you, brother, again here. After a long time, I am seeing you anywhere. So, <laughs> Alhamdulillah, we established. And we purchased a lane. And Alhamdulillah. Now, I just want to tell you that. Only two important things, then I have to go and uh, people are waiting for me because I have to perform uh, nikah. So 9 o'clock I have to be there and I am in totally opposite direction. I have to go to North, Arena Boulevard. Uh, this is the life of Imam. All right. Many times during the day I perform janaza, evening time I have to go and solemnize marriage ceremony. This is the life. So, one, a few things I want to bring in your attention. Our Imam, not every second week or third week, at least once a month or at least one in two months, 
we have to tell the people around your neighborhood if any Muslim is leaving, so please bring in our notice. Because there are many brothers and some sisters too. They were living individual life, not collective life. Okay, they don't have a family, at least they have a masjid and Islamic center. You have to attach with them. Why? What gonna happen? Many times I was not able to wash the body and no one can wash the body. Why? Because person passed away four or five days ago. When the smell start to come out, then people realize, oh, there is some problem over here. Then the police gonna come and this and that. So after that, body has been decomposed. So first thing, in America, since we are in great minority, we have to know where is our brothers, where is our sisters. This is very, very important. Of course, in America, you know, everybody come over here to get some benefit, you know, get beautiful things over here. The most important thing is we have to build ourselves, then we have to give proper high quality of education, all right? Bring our level and status up there. So it is okay, alhamdulillah, you can do that. But the most important thing is we have to think what is our reality. Sooner or later we will be there. This is the reason I have read that verse, minha khalaqnakum. It is not just reminding, we have to feel. Just like many times in janaza ijtema I said, if you are coming to just attend the janaza and give dua, you are getting only 50% benefit. 100% in that time, when you are going to believe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala giving me opportunity to see my own future. There is no gathering will tell you your future, but this kind of gathering. Of course, everybody wants to know his future, right? And the maqbara, qabrastan, cemetery, and that ishtima will tell what is our future. So we have to think about what going to happen. So, next time I will come over here, if you will be interested to learn how to wash the body and how to cut the kafan, I give the kafan. In one sitting I cannot make it, and top of that I have to go. Brother, please believe me that, you know what happening? From last five, six years I am getting slow because of my age. So Alhamdulillah we have a brother. I taught them. So they were doing. And top of that, of course, they need some kind of help. So we are paying them. Cemetery, pay. But from last three, four months, that guru is gone. Because they are asking something and cemetery policy said that we cannot go through with it. Then Alhamdulillah we have a I know few Fijian brothers, now they are doing that. My question is, the way I love my father, the way I love my mother, nobody can. Ultimate respect person can give to his parents or her parents is this one. إِذَا مَاتَ إِبْنِ آدَمْ إِنْ قَطَعْ عَمَلُهُ إِلَّا بِثَلَاثِ One of the three things is what? أَوْ وَلَدٌ صَالِحُ يَدْعُوا لَهُ Where is وَلَدٌ صَالِحُ يَدْعُوا لَهُ Imam and sometime you know Janaza I mean person passed away three four days ago and children are here and there London, Paris or New York or Hawaii Okay, hold Imam, we are coming. And they're just going to come in there with suit and boot and everything. 
but I don't know how they perform Salatul Janaza. Although the position they are holding in this world because of his father. His father sent them. He worked very hard day and night. Doesn't matter winter or summer or rainy. But he educate them properly. Now they are holding that kind of position. They are big boss in their companies. But what they are doing as a Muslim? To just paying people you do for us. So each and every individual has to take this matter seriously, especially in this country because we are not in majority over here. We have a lot of challenges. We have to learn how to give ghusl, how to give kafan, and how to perform salatul janaza, on how to, you know, take him inside. It is very, very important. And imams, all the imams, my humble request, many bid'at start to come in cemetery. We cannot see those bid'at in our country. And we cannot see, alhamdulillah, whatever literature we have, right? Whatever guidance we can get from Siratun Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, from other ahadith. Now, women are more involved than men. Women want to lower the body. Women want to pass the dirt first, then man. And two, three imams, they are encouraging that, yes. If I object, the question is there, it is haram. Brother, I am not a mufti to give you fatwa, this is haram and halal. I just want to think what happened in the time of Prophet Sallallahu Hazrat Aisha loved Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What do you think? You love Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam more than Hazrat Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha? Impossible. And what happened? In the time of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Monday he passed away, Wednesday janaza, burial for Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Hazrat Aisha reported that when we start to hear the news of the shovel, then we start to Imagine now the burial is taking place now because the noise is coming. They are using shower. She has a full right to go and see what's happening over there. And she's a Ummahatul Mumin. She's our mother. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam passed away in his room, in her room. And that was the tradition. The place Nabi or Prophet passed same place they have to you know bury him there so same thing happened with nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam passed away in hazrat aisha radiyallahu ta'ala in his room and the qabr was there hazrat aisha was there but behind the wall he start to hear that news okay now the burial is taking place she has a full right to say hey, stop i want to see what happened no so why you want to change the tradition? Listen, if we start to change the tradition, then this kind of mind will take us somewhere. What I do when I am present in the time of burial over there? Of course, first brother, sister, little distance you can watch if you want. And after we're going to move, then you can go and make dua whatever you want. First of all, women should go with the company of husband, brother, or with mahram. All right? And first of all, you have to know, you know, you have a nadafa or not. You have a tahar or not. All right? You are in vadu and ghusl or not. But no one's care about that. So imam has to talk in, you know, at least once in three months, what is the adab? Etiquettes. How to visit Qabristan and Makkah. So, now, alhamdulillah, I want to take everybody. We have a different, different people from different continent, from different culture, from different language. But I just want to take all of them. All right? I don't want to force anything. I don't <coughs> lose my anger. May Allah protect me. But we have to talk. It is not only my job. 
every imam has to think and we have to educate our community thank you may allah reward you inshallah uh, you know each and every islamic center and masjid they have to make one body all right make some people available all right in emergency you know cemetery call you you have to get ready alhamdulillah many time brother sadiq helped me in the time of ghusl and doctor sajid alhamdulillah may allah reward him he helped me many times because there was nobody all right so we have to have a one committee one body to take care of this thing so thank you very much may allah reward you i cannot take question and answer i will be back sometime if you allow so in that time i will demonstrate i will bring something practically show what to do what to not not to do inshallah okay brother so i think it's good for the day inshallah سبحان الله وبحمده سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك ونشهد ان لا اله الا انت نستغفرك ونتوب سبحان ربك رب العزه عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين جزاك الله خير السلام عليكم جزاك الله خير امام قاسم ان شاء الله we will invite him again